my name is Jonathan Hicks. Today we're drawing pie charts. Now in this, this video we're doing pie charts by hand, so imagine you're drawing it on a bit of paper. Uh, I'm going to do another video where you draw pie, pie charts using a computer, so using Excel in that case. So go and watch that one if you want to know how to do it on the computer. This video is if you want to draw the pie charts by hand on a bit of paper, so using a protractor. So that's the semicircular angle measuring thing. Now I'm going to assume you know how to use a protractor. I'm not going to show you how to use a protractor in this video. I'll do another video for how to use a protractor. This is how you construct the pie chart, how you work out how big each of the wedges should be, and then how you go about drawing it on the paper. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to stick a uh, frequency table up here that we'll need to construct our pie chart. So give me a moment. All right, there we go, there's our frequency table. Now, I've chosen the question, what's your favorite animal? So imagine we went around a bunch of people and asked them what their favorite animal was. And here are the responses, supposedly, that they gave. So the frequency here tells you that 20 people picked a dog as their favorite animal. 16 people went for cats, nine went for elephant, 26 for tiger, and one person, there's always one, went for snake. Now, when you construct your pie chart, you're going to need a blank column. And if you ever ask to do this in a test, they will give you this blank column here. And you use this column to work out the angles that the different segments, different wedges within the pie chart need to be. So uh, let me just give you a broad picture of what we're aiming at here. So pie chart's obviously going to be a large circle at some point in the middle. And then we're going to construct some wedges to go inside it. Now, the first thing you always drew, draw when you draw your pie chart is you need a vertical line that just goes straight up, like so. And then you're going to have to work out how much, how big each of these wedges are going to be. They're going to represent the dog and the cat and the elephant and the different categories. So, in order to do that, the first thing you need to know is how many people you've got all together. So you add up all your frequencies. Now, I have already carefully constructed my frequencies, so they should add up to 72. So the total number of people who answered my questionnaire comes to 72. The total angle in the whole circle here, well the total angle in the whole circle is always 360 degrees. So you've got 360 degrees that you need to share out amongst 72 people. The critical thing we need to work out here is how much of an angle, how many degrees would each person in here represent? Once we know that, we can work out how big each of the different wedges need to be. So in this case, if I've got 360 degrees and 72 people, I want to divide the 360 degrees by the 72. So, just to stress, I'll do a little calculation at the bottom here. So the um, angle for one person will be the total number of degrees, in this case 360 degrees, divided by the total number of people. At that point you normally reach for your calculator. So 360 divided by 72 gives us 5. So that means you need 5 degrees for each person in the frequency table. Yeah? So this is 26 people you need 26 lots of 5 degrees to work out how big the tiger wedge would be. So once you've got that, once you know that each person is 5 degrees, then you go back to your frequency table and you just multiply each of these frequencies by the 5 degrees. So the dog, 20 people went for dog, 20 lots of 5, well 5 20s are going to give you 100. 100 degrees. So this final column is for working out the angle. Now usually you just do this on a calculator, I can probably just do this in my head, but you just times each of these by 5 because each person is 5 degrees. So 9 fives are 45, 26 lots of 5 is going to give you 130, and 1 5 is 5. Now one little check here to make sure you've done it right is if you add up all the angles, you should get 360 degrees, because it's got to fill the whole pie chart. You can't have a little gap with something missing. And if you add those up, I think you do get 360 degrees. So that's how you work out the angles. So just to stress again, you take 360, the angle for the whole pie chart, divide it by the number of people, and that tells you how much 
of an angle, how many degrees, you need for one person in your frequency table. And then that much, in this case the five degrees, you just multiply by each of the different frequencies to give you the angles. Once you know the angles, you can start drawing your pie chart. Now as I say, the first thing you do is from the center line, draw a line that goes vertically straight up. You need a starting point and you always take the straight up point as your starting point. And then just work through your different categories. So the dog needs to be an ang to have an angle of 100 degrees, sorry. So from here with your pr protractor, you stick the protractor on, measure around 100 degrees and then draw a line. So it'd be here, round by 100 degrees. So I'm just gonna guess, obviously I don't have a giant protractor for this. So more or less it's gonna be about there. So I'm saying that that angle there is 100 degrees. Now you don't write on the angle like I'm doing here. I'm just doing this to explain how to construct it. I'll show you what you actually do in a moment. But basically you're just gonna be drawing the line. So you draw that line there. And then once you've got that line in, this is gonna be the dog one. You can write dog in here if you want to. So next up is the cat. That needs to be 80 degrees. Now this time you start with your protractor sitting on this line and you're gonna be measuring around 80 degrees that way. So again, 80 degrees is gonna be about there. So I'm saying that that wedge is 80 degrees. You measure that with your protractor. So that's gonna be the cat. Elephant, next up, needs to be 45 degrees. So we'll do another one. That's gonna be about there. 45 degrees, elephant. Then we've got the tiger, it's 130 degrees, that's a really big one. So that's gonna to go to about there maybe. So 130 degrees for the tiger. And then finally the snake is just five degrees. And that should be what's left. At this point you check with your protractor, put it on here, measure that angle and make sure that that really is five degrees. You might find if you go around this way that it's not quite five you might be out by one or two degrees. Um, as long as you're not out by too much, it should be fine, but you'll find that tiny little errors in measuring each of these angles will sort of add up and give you one or two degrees out by the end. If you're more than a couple of degrees out, you probably wanna rub it out and draw it again. Um, but one or two degrees should be fine. So this tiny sliver up here is gonna be your last one. The snake, if I can fit that in. All right. So that's how you construct the pie chart. Just give me a moment, I'm gonna rub out these angles in a minute, I'm gonna show you what you should make it actually look like when you draw it. All right, so more or less that's what you've done. You don't necessarily have to write all the names in like that. I have done, but that's completely up to you. What you really should have though, as well as this, even if you write the names in, you should put a key on it. Now I strongly recommend for a pie chart you use color, makes it look pretty, apart from everything else, but it makes it easier to distinguish the different categories as well. So you, are, you could write the names in like this, but even if you do, I suggest you have a key at the side. If you don't write the names in, you absolutely must have a key. So the key is gonna look like this. You should write key here to say what it is. And then you're essentially gonna have boxes that represent the different colors that you've done on your pie chart. So if we pick some colors here, so if I say that the dog is gonna be red, I could color that in red. Like so, and then I would do a little red box here at the side, and then you write next to that dog. And then you do the same thing for the cat. So maybe the cat's gonna be blue. And then you do another box here that's blue and you write cat. And you carry on like that. I won't do all of them, you get the idea. So you can have different colors round here and you do the little boxes at the side and write what they are. Now as I say, you don't have to write the names in here because you will have the names on your key. But it's very important that you have a key for a pie chart. It's the first thing people look at. Uh, now one very other important other thing that you do need on your pie chart is a title. So generally it refers to the original question from the questionnaire. So we ask people, what's your favorite animal? And you could just write that question at the top or you could give it more of a summary title and you could say something like, 
people's favorite animals. Something like that. It's important that it's descriptive that it explains what the chart is about. Otherwise, people will look at this pie chart and they'll be like, uh, okay, it's got something to do with animals, but I've no idea what. So you need the title to explain, ah, oh, okay, it's people's favorite animals. I see. So that's how you construct a pie chart. You start with a frequency table, work out the angles that I've explained, use your protractor to draw them in, make sure you give it a key and a title.